Okay, so guys, that worked pretty good for the green fringe, didn't it? There's another picture of her in there on a white background. Go through the same channel masking process and put her onto a 50% gray layer as well. And we'll see if we can fix any fringing that might occur there. If you look in the folder, there's actually two raw files in there. There's the one on the green background and there's the one on the white background. Call it up, take a look through the channels, on the green one, she was on a green background, so in the green channel, the, the background was fairly light. In this one, she's already on a white background. So for the most part, you're just looking for the best contrast within the person itself. The background is already pretty white. And quite often with people, you'll find that it's the blue channel. And in this case, it is. Got the best contrast. I'm gonna duplicate that blue channel. And when you call up the levels, you pretty much don't have to pull that white down very much at all. It's already a white background. In fact, I might just leave it. But the black point, comes up. Actually, it was a little more consistent as well. This black edge around there, and hit OK. And even the cleaning up in the inside is a little bit easier. And again, once you've got her cut out, we'll put her onto a 50% gray background, and we'll see if there's any fringing. And just a hint, there will be. So guys, you might notice there's a little bit of a fringe around her. Now, on the green screen image, where she was shot against green, it was a decidedly green fringe. Now, in this case, it's not a color, it's a brightness, isn't it? Hmm. Remember we took a look at the actual dodge and burn tools. And if I turn off the layer, layer mask, I just hit the shift key and clicked on the layer mask and that disabled it. She's got white back there. We're going to have to do something damaging. We're going to have to actually affect the pixels on this layer. So with this, actually, maybe I'll make a duplicate of it just in case things go tragically wrong. If you ever have to duplicate a layer that has a layer mask, turn off the eyeball on the original. That's just there in case things go wrong. But you don't want it to be visible because it'll show up through the background there. But if I took my actual dodge and burn tools, remember if I took the burn tool, and if I tried to use the highlights mode on the burn, it'll actually add some grayish to the image. And if I go over top of the hair here, oh, look at what it can do. It can darken down that white. And it's the white that we're seeing through that fringe. So what if I just grab my burn tool, set it to highlights, play with the exposure. I'm going to leave it at 100% just so it happens pretty fast. Make sure you have the layer itself selected, not the layer mask. These little four corner points are around the layer. Now just paint on the hair. So it's taking the white, remember if we take a look at this hair here, and we zoom in, there's the hair, there's a lot of white in that hair. And in the highlight mode, it'll actually darken down that white. So when we see it through the layer mask, you can see that white darkening, and it pulls it down closer to what that hair should be. Oops, make sure you have the layer selected, not the layer mask, there we go. And we can darken that hair down. And we can just work around the outside darkening the hair as we go. If you want a little bit more control over it, you can drop the opacity. If you go, say, 50% or so, here I am at 40, just click and drag, click and drag multiple passes, and gradually bring that darkness down to what you want it to be.